Good morning, I'm Steve Skelton and welcome to Blackleaf Guardians. Behind us is the Rocky Mountain Front and uh, this is our ranch that you're seeing right here. We ranch on uh, 9,000 acres on uh, the East Front. It's a very hostile environment but yet also a very beautiful environment. Um, we are in the corridor of the grizzly bear recovery area. The canyons behind me in the mountains are a, a huge denning area for the mighty grizzly. And so we uh, deal with grizzly bears on a daily basis. Thus we have blackleaf guardians and guard dogs. Um, right now, if you look behind me, you can see our sheep flock way out in the meadow. And uh, we approximately have uh, 15 dogs in our pack today. And uh, we will uh, feed these dogs every day out here on the range as we bring the sheep out. And uh, the dogs work 24 seven to keep bears, predators, coyotes, wolves, and eagles away from our sheep. The dogs also patrol at night and uh, distribute predators far and wide away. And um, they also help protect uh, our cattle herds as well. So different. I mean, are, are you breeding for specific guardian purposes? Not just sheep, I mean, is there, a, is, you know, there's how many different breeds do you have here right now? So we have uh, four breeds here today. So we have uh, the Turkish Boz, Turkish Kangal, the Turkish Akbosh, uh, an American spin on the Turkish dogs called the Anatolian Shepherd, and we also have the Commodore. So, what, how many is that? Five? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yep. How we classify the dogs, though, is some breeds are what we call sticky dogs, and some breeds we call patrolling dogs. Now, there's individuals in each breed that take on the characteristic that maybe is not characteristics of their breed. So a patrolling dog usually is the boss and the Kangle, and they'll hang on a bluff like this all day and just kind of overlook the sheep, while the sticky dogs are down with the sheep, like the Okbosh and the Commodores. And the idea behind that is, is the sticky dogs are with the sheep 100% of the time, but at nighttime, those dogs bed down with the sheep and punch their time card and say, we're done. Then the patrolling dogs punch their time card to on and they start patrolling around the perimeter of the sheep and they, they push and distribute predators away. And so in effect, we create a layering system that if a predator slips through, they're gonna hit the patrollers first. And then we kind of have like the Commodore is kind of a sub patroller. And then the last but not least, the sticky dogs are always there to deal with business if a, if a predator comes in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. And we also saw as you were bringing them out, you've got the Border Collies. That yeah. You have trained to. So border collies are very integral for us to gather and move, and um, we're constantly moving sheep around, and they are our, our lifeline to moving sheep. And you've trained them as well. Yep. Yep. Very good. Now, as far as the versatility of your dogs, it's not just sheep. I mean, chickens, alpacas. I mean, yes. You can train them. These dogs can go about any direction you want. In fact. So two months ago, I had a lady call me and she lives in a very urban area with one acre and there's houses all around. And you know what she's raising? Bunnies. Okay. And she says, can you train a dog to protect bunnies? And I was thinking that's about 500 dog snacks. Yeah. And uh, so at any rate, uh, we took a young uh, Boz over to her. Okay. And uh, I told her, don't, uh, don't play fetch or anything, chase with the dog. And uh, so right now they have lost zero bunnies and the dog is just eating it up and loving it. That is amazing. So these dogs will bond to anything, including children and people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's all what you want to protect. Right, right. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. The other thing about the Turkish dogs that I so love is they're very calm and relaxed. They're not big barkers unless something's going down. Um, if it goes down, their tails will curl and they might do some warning shots of barks to get the group together. And then Katie bar the door, it's going down on a predator. Got it. And they're, they're real serious about their job. And they'll come together and work, yes. you know, a grizzly bear. <laughs> I mean, a grizzly bear is is terrifying is massive yep. and these dogs will bond together and they just they have a system of yep they uh the kangles and the boss and uh just about our dog here mm -hmm. 
uh, they're biting dogs. And so bears don't like it because they're going to get bit. Okay. Um, and they're very athletic. Um, so we're like the Great Pyrenees and the Maremmas, they're great dogs, but they're not apex dogs. These are apex dogs. And so um, like a wolf pack or something comes in, um, these dogs are very apexy and they'll stand up to it where the other dogs will retreat. They're just not in the same category. And tell us a little bit about the collars that we see. I don't know if you can see them, but they have these <clears throat> spiked collars. That yeah. Are... So we spike collar all of our dogs and it's armor for them. Mm -hmm. um, they, uh, uh, when they get into a fight type scenario, predators always go for the neck. And when they do, they get a mouthful of spikes. Okay. Right now we do not have everything spiked and I need to start spiking everybody up because our bears are coming back in for berry season. Okay. And so the congregation of bears will get very thick again. So um, next week we'll have everything spiked up. Got it. So Got we kind of give them a little off time in the summer because mm -hmm. spikes are dangerous to other dogs too if they rough house and whatnot. Mm -hmm. so. so this is our typical spike collar. Um, as you can see, spikes are real serious, very sharp. Um, I actually saw one time it looked like a big noodle hanging off a dog's collar. And when I got up to it, it was a bear's lip. It was about 12 inches long. It was that dark stuff, a little bit of hair on it. And he'd evidently tried to bite into the dog and it caught on his lip and ripped his lip off. Um, very hard on jeans <laughs> and uh, very hard on your legs when the dogs get jumpy. But you can see they're very sharp and very, uh, very gnarly, but they protect our dogs. We just had a dog get attacked last week she just got out of the hospital. It's Akbosh Patty. And this is what saved her life, I'm sure of it. So uh, um, they're worth their weight in gold for our dog. So now we're gonna talk about predator load and what it's like to ranch with uh, apex predators. So on this ranch, because we're in the hub of the uh, grizzly bear recovery area for the United States, um, we can have vast amounts of bears. And what I mean by that is three years ago, the fish and game were flying here doing their survey. And on our ranch alone, there's 26 adult bears that they counted, not counting the offspring. So that's a huge load of bears to have right in your backyard and amongst your livestock. So it, it creates quite a problem. Um, back behind me and to the north a little bit, there's a butte called Scoffin Butte. And there's a pack of wolves that lives there. Um, they circle through here along the mountain front quite regularly and um, the other apex predator that grieves us um, in a lot of ways is the wolf. And so by establishing these dogs as a large pack, um, it deters the wolves by them viewing our dogs as another wolf pack. And so far it's worked very well. Um, if anybody were to ask me what predator I fear the most for my dogs, it would be the wolf. Um, grizzly bears are pretty handleable and um, they don't like a lot of conflict. They will fight, but generally they are looking for a way to get out and leave after the dogs hit them. Um, wolf pack, different deal. But so far, knock on wood, um, we're surviving and doing well with our pack of dogs. Uh, so one of the things we do here to help manage our dogs and our livestock is we build night pens for the sheep that are electrified on the outside. And so we put the sheep in at night and then we uh, turn the fences on. And any dog that's tired, they can go in and rest that night while the other dogs go out and work and patrol. So it gives dogs a reprieve from uh, the predator load that happens every night and all the time. Um, a lot of people we talk about predators, we don't really understand uh, what predators do on a ranching situation to the livestock except death. So everybody thinks, oh, they lost a sheep or they lost a cow, it's a bad thing. But what people don't understand is predators create stress in your herd animals. Um, I lost a quarter horse stallion that was worth $25,000 to, um, to me that I, that I had invested in that horse. So it's stressful to me also. But if you look at sheep or cattle, and see the stress that predators put on them, their production levels go way down. Um, the animals quit milking, um, the calves uh, and, the, and the lambs do not grow as well because of all this stress that predators put on them because they're constantly heckling them. So by having the guardian dogs, we eliminate a lot of the stress. Um, you can see 
sheep and cattle kind of settle um, when the dogs are present because they know that they're safe. Anytime you take the dogs away, they get very edgy and nervous because they know they're not protected. Um, so we've had a lot of bear issues um, over the years. Uh, we have lost some sheep to bears. Generally, it's sheep that stray away from the flock and we do not herd our sheep all day. And the dogs can't cover every sheep that's out there. And so sometimes sheep take off and they get by themselves and then they, they get into a bear or a coyote and then they die. I always tell everybody there's a, a big difference between a grizzly bear and a coyote. A grizzly bear is like the jetliner that crashes and 300 people die. It's like, oh my, it was a grizzly bear attack and oh my goodness, and it killed five sheep. Um, the coyote is the common car wreck that Uncle Joe died in last week and that uh, doesn't even make the newspapers. And coyotes sit there and bang on you all day long, every day, trying to get into your flock. And so really, um, when we talk about one of the worst predators that's ever devised for sheep people especially, it's the common coyote, because they just never, never go away. We have had great success um, with the dogs. Uh, when the government trappers fly this area on coyote abatement hunts, um, they call us and they tell us that literally around our sheep for about a mile and a half to two, uh, two miles is a sterile environment of predators. And that just speaks for the integrity of these dogs and what they do. Talking about our sheep today, we raise Targi sheep. And uh, they're a fine wool meat type sheep. They're uh, Western Range. They were uh, developed in the Dubois Idaho Experiment Station in the 50s. They're half Rambouillet and then a quarter uh, Lincoln and a quarter, I can't remember. But at any rate, uh, they're composite type sheep. Very extremely hardy. Um, they run about 21 micron in wool. Um, just a good all round sheep for Northern Montana ranges. Um, we generally run about 1200 ewes here on this ranch. And then we have a cattle herd of 250 mama cows that we keep also. Our goal is to get up to two bands of sheep, which would be 2000. Um, we're fairly new to sheep. We've only been doing it for four years. So we are going to grow as, as we can kind of handle it and expand. Um, the, uh, the sheep market has proven to be very well for us. Um, the sheep are different graziers than a cow. And so like the hill land that you see around us here, they, the sheep will graze at where a cow will stay in the bottom land. And they eat two different types of forages. Um, sheep will eat all the sedges and sages and, and whatnot where the cows are mainly grass eaters. So they really complement each other on this ranch. Um, we've almost uh, gained about a third of our animal units in grazing through sheep because of the diversity of grasses that they eat. So it's really uh, behooved us to run sheep with cattle. Um, of course the predator thing is always an issue and thus we have the dogs. Uh, but by and large our greatest problem here for uh, protection of sheep is in the springtime with weather and baby lambs. Um, we have over 100 mile an hour winds here and if you get like a 60 mile an hour wind with a driving rain you just kill a whole bunch of lambs. So we have to build a lot of barns and a lot of uh, protection for springtime lambing and um, it's just what we do. This ranch uh, was developed in the 1880s as a cow ranch and then in 1886 uh, Montana had a massive uh, weather system and the open range cattle starved to death and um, they never really recovered. And from that time forward, uh, Montana flipped over to sheep because they're better graziers in the winter. They can, pause, they can paw through the snow. And so what happened is for a quite a long time in Montana, the Northern ranges of Montana, Wyoming and Idaho were primarily sheep. Now, after the advent of World War II um, and textiles changing, sheep lost their popularity and things have swung back to cattle. Um, but now we're starting to see a move again towards sheep production. Um, raw textiles are getting in more demand and um, the uh, ethnic groups um, like to eat sheep more also. So that's kind of our game plan here is to expand our, our sheep bands and uh, maybe quiet the cattle side down a little bit and um, captivate on, on what we're doing here.